Jackie Joanna Kersey. I'm here in Times Square with Boys and Girls Club of America. We got the Great Preachers campaign going on here in Times Square. You know, being an alum of the Boys and Girls Club, I can honestly say it has made a big difference in my life. Providing a safe place to come to, uh, working with people who care about you, who provide. If you don't have clothing, they make sure you have clothing. If you're hungry, they make sure you eat. And then also you go in there, you can be a part of Power Hour, you know, Team Reach, the different programs that provide you life skills, skills that you can carry on with you for the rest of your life. Because we know education is the key, and Boys and Girls Club provides that for you anywhere and everywhere. I'm glad to be here with Boys and Girls Club on uh, American Graduate Day. And welcome back to American Graduate Day. We are live at the Tisch WNET studios in Lincoln Center. I'm Bianca Goladriga. We're in the third hour of our broadcast, and that, of course, was three-time Olympic gold medalist Jackie Joyner Kersey. She is one of several renowned athletes testifying today on a lifetime of benefits gained by low-income students who took part in the Boys and Girls Clubs of America. Each year, millions of American kids miss out on expanding learning opportunities that would help them get ahead, but also prevents them from falling behind in school. It's called the Summer Slide. Well, a new Boys and Girls Club program designed to address that problem is the Summer Brain Gain, which operates for 10 weeks every summer for youngsters aged 5 to 18. Educators say summer begins in September, so let's get right to it. Joining me now are Kimberly Boyd, Vice President of Academic Success Planning for the Boys and Girls Club of America, and Elijah McKnight, my new best friend, a participant in their Brain Gain program in Columbus, Ohio. I want to welcome you to American Graduate Day. And Elijah, let's start with you. Tell us about yourself, because you're not only a student, you are a successful athlete and a musician. Tell us about that. Yes, um, I am uh, in the marching band and I do uh, football. So during halftime, I take off my pads and I got there in March. Um, I'm in the jazz band. I'm 15 years old and I'm a sophomore in high school. Two positions you play in football, right? Uh, yes. Let's uh, not be modest here. You could say three because, you know, the marching band thing. Yes, okay, <laughs> three, technically, yes. And what has the Boys and Girls Club done for you as far as advancing your aspirations into becoming an adult? The Boys and Girls Club has provided me with lots of opportunities and things like that. We go out here and we learn how to basically live life, and life is tough, so we do things. Um, brain Gain has so many opportunities. We got to do interviews mock interviews and we went in and got all dressed up and stuff like that and talked to people and stuff and learned how to deal with interviews and things like that. So that really helps. And we also got to go to museums, things like that, and uh, also did fun things like go to the movies, seeing the new Transformers. It was fun. Everything was... And it sounds like you have great summers now with the Boys and Girls Club. And Kimberly, I want to turn to you because there is a, a, an issue of the, the sort of brain drain that we do see in the summer, the skill atrophy of kids who don't have opportunities to continue learning and to uh, it, it be in, in, the, in the circle of other friends and mentors. Can you tell us how important this organization is and why you think that our viewers should know more about it? Yeah, I think one of the things that a lot of folks don't understand is that every year there are millions of children in the summer whose families can't afford to put them in the exciting and engaging summer activities that really help them to stay engaged and learning. And for the kids who can't, which primarily come from lower income communities, those kids lose an average of two to three months of learning every summer in both literacy and math. And what is interesting is that those are cumulative. So by the time they reach ninth grade, most students from lower income communities are three to four years behind their higher income peers, and about 75% of that delay is attributed to the losses that occur over the summer. And so at Boys and Girls Club of America, we really felt it was imperative for us to attack this, this slide head on because it represents one of the biggest barriers our kids face in terms of graduating from high school on time and really being prepared for the post-secondary um, choices that they have available to them. And Elijah, how long have you been involved with the Boys and Girls Club? Oh, I've been involved with the Boys and Girls Club for six years now, uh, ever since I was nine. And I still love it. It's fantastic. You still love it. So can you talk about the difference in your summer experiences before you joined the Boys and Girls Club oh. to today and, and how that has really, you know, it related itself on to your academic performances? Yeah, um, during, we would just go to, always go to camp every year. Camp was fun. It was cool. But you don't get to go to the movies in camp. You don't get to learn how to live life. I mean, you get, to, I guess, survive in the wild or whatever, but you get to, it's just a fantastic opportunity with the Boys and Girls Clubs, and we just do so much. Brain Gain actually 
what we do during brain gain, anything that makes you think, anything that sharpens your brain. Um, because like you said, a lot of kids, we do lose it, a lot of stuff that we learned over the summertime and things like that. And it's kind of like you study for a test and after the test, you might even the next semester forget what the test was about. Mm -hmm. So over the summertime, it's even worse. So brain gain help, it helps. It's, it's fantastic. I think a lot of your peers may uh, not be so thrilled with you to say that, that they should continue with their studies. <laughs> but, but when it comes to your self-awareness uh, and, and your self-pride, have you seen a boost now that you've been part of the Boys and Girls Club? Yes. Um, I actually started liking school. Um, I did not like school until the Boys and Girls Club, until I started going there during the summertime. And we do a lot of programs and things, so that just really made me think about life and how serious school is and things. So. And Kimberly, how did you become involved with the organization? Tell us a little bit about your background. Uh, I've been working um, in the education arena since I started my career more than 25 years ago and really about 20 years ago got involved with the Head Start program and was working at the regional level with the Head Start program in many of the same communities where our Boys and Girls Clubs are located and had moved on through my career through different opportunities and when the opportunity came uh, available at Boys and Girls Club, I felt like I was coming back to the kids that I was working with when they were younger. They were they were older. I was a little older, but it was um, it was the same challenges that they were facing and that their families face um, in terms of access to resources to really help their kids reach their dreams, which is what we're trying to do. Right. And what are what are some of the biggest challenges you face right now? Obviously, we see a perfect example of of a brilliant outcome in Elijah, and we want to see more of that in other children. What are the biggest hurdles you're facing now? Well, there are a couple. One is making sure that um, our clubs are places where kids want to be, right? So we want to make clubs engaging and exciting and that they don't feel like school 2.0. Schools play an incredibly important role in their lives, but we see ourselves as being the place where that education becomes real, where, it, where education meets life um, and they get to apply what they're learning and follow their passions. And so as the kids enter middle school, we really try to allow them to follow their passions and help them to find the answers to the to the things that are bothering them in their own communities, help them to recognize that they are problem solvers. And along the way, they're learning. And we tell them about learning. We don't want to just sneak it in. Um, and yet, uh, they, they, they are learning and they're having fun while they're doing it. Um, and, and we talk about how important that is. And, and I know people like Elijah have overcome a lot of obstacles growing up as a young child. How does your family feel about the Boys and Girls Club? And I, I bet this is a family changing experience, yes. not just a personal experience. Um, my family, we just, we just love the Boys and Girls Club. They've done so much for us and things like that. And it's like a, it's a lot of violence going around and things like that every day and things. And the Boys and Girls Club just kind of, it's like a force field. They just keep all the bad things out. And so I just feel like the club is like probably one of the safest places you can go. Well, uh, Elijah and Kimberly, uh, we want to thank you so much for joining us today and sharing your stories. And hopefully uh, millions of people out there will, will contribute to the Boys and Girls Club of America, especially with you as a role model in your nice bow tie. Thank you. As I mentioned, my new best friend, Elijah, <laughs> I'll be looking out for you. Well, in a Harris survey, 57% of the club's alumni said that, that their Boys and G Girls Club actually saved their lives. You could very well do the same for an at-risk kid, so check out our website to learn more about how to become an American champion. You can also log on to our Facebook page and check out one of our chats or share your own story. Hi, I'm Cece Sabathia, and I'm proud to be a part of American Graduates Day. I'm here in Times Square on behalf of the Boys and Girls Club. The Boys and Girls Club is, is special to me because it was a place that I can go to um, after school. You know, both of my parents worked. My grandmother worked, so um, I spent a lot of my days after school, you know, right after school in the Boys and Girls Club from about 3.30 to about 7.30 at night. So uh, that included homework. You know, I did a lot of sporting events there. My first boxing team, my first basketball team I played on came from the Boys and Girls Club. So a lot of my first experiences and a lot of my good experiences came from the Boys and Girls Club. So I always feel obligated to do whatever I can to, to give back to the Boys and Girls Club of America. And uh, that's why I'm here today. <laughs>